special webinar, we are very happy to present a guest speaker, Jaroslav Navratil. I'm also very happy that you, so many of you registered and listened to today's webinar. Yada will speak about pre-stressed concrete design in RFEM using the upcoming completely revised RF tendon module, which will be available with RFEM 5.06 early next year. Jaroslav Navratil is the technical director of IDEA RS Limited, which develops structural engineering software solutions. He and his co-workers developed the RF tendon presented today. He also works as an associate professor at the VSB Technical University of Ostrava, where he gives lectures on pre-stressed concrete. He's a chartered engineer in statics and dynamics of structures and also a forensic expert in civil engineering. He's a recognized expert in the field of concrete and pre-stressed concrete structures and his specialization is the development of methods for the design and analysis of structures. He published many technical papers and research reports and also want, I also want to highlight his textbook, Pre-Stressed Concrete Structures. The two colleagues on Global site that are responsible for the RFEM RF tendon module are Alexander Meyerhofer and Adrian Langhammer. Alexander is the main developer of the concrete modules that are available for RFEM and RSTAB. He takes also care of testing and product descriptions. Adrian supports you as users of concrete modules and the RF tendon module. He takes also care of the testing process at Global. Today, both are answering your questions throughout the webinar. So you see all together that we organize the team of experts today and I really hope that you will enjoy the webinar and that you will find it interesting. So now, just a quick word to the go to webinar control panel. So as you see, you should all see the screen on the right hand side of your screen and you can use the orange button to show and hide the control panel and the most important bit is the chat option for you where you can ask your questions and Alexander and Adrian will answer all your questions throughout the webinar and just in case there are too many questions coming in, you definitely get an answer but it might be via email after the webinar. Some important questions, we might also summarize them at the end and Yada might be able to discuss them at the end of the webinar if, if there is some time left. So that is all from my side. Now it is time that I hand over to Jaroslav Navratil, our guest speaker. Enjoy the webinar. Thank you, Berlin. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, I would like to give you an uh, overview of the features uh, of uh, our modules uh, for tendon uh, design, of pre-stressing design in RFM. I will start with a short uh, introduction to show the range of uh, the application and uh, then we will switch into live presentation of uh, how we can design post tangent slab in a residential house. Uh, we will start with the modeling uh, in RFM. Uh, I will explain the principles of um, so-called result beams and uh, the system rip and slab. And then I will switch into uh, external module uh, to show the tendon geometry, properties, um, losses, uh, the effects of pre-stressing and also some reinforcement design. And then I would like uh, to indicate uh, some practical examples which you will see in our future webinars or in our seminar in uh, January next, next year. Uh, I also uh, will indicate uh, some um, topics for uh, the theory which is used, uh, which I will explain uh, in detail during the seminar. Uh, the, these external modules, uh, RF tendon and RF tendon uh, design, uh, are linked to RFM by a COM interface. Uh, so they share a common data model and uh, it works, uh, or these two modules work uh, with uh, the data from RFM and they give uh, uh, all the data regarding the tendons and uh, tendon loads back to RFM. Uh, these external modules uh, use uh, the power of uh, the finite element engine 
on our, of our, our family. About the range of application, of course, we can analyze uh, both pre- and post-tangent uh, structures, both uh, 1D and 2D uh, elements uh, in uh, either uh, civil and uh, industrial buildings or bridges. Uh, I will show, as I, as I explained, uh, post-tangent flat slab. Uh, but uh, you can also use it for transfer beams, uh, pre-stressed frames, uh, or precast girders. As concerning the bridges, um, the use is, uh, I would say, limited to cast-in-place bridges due to uh, the possibilities of uh, the analysis uh, or the prefabricated pre- or post-tangent uh, girders. Now we uh, should go to the first example, which is uh, this post-tangent uh, flat slab. Uh, you can see uh, the picture uh, in of the model in RFM and also uh, the picture of uh, the model exported to external module with uh, the uh, beam, continuous beam highlighted with the effective uh, slabs in it. Uh, then I was thinking of uh, what kind of example I would show. I was inspired by this uh, residential house. You can see the visualization of uh, the house which was built uh, some years ago in the town of Zlin in my country. This is quite, this is a family house but uh, uh, quite big one. The length of the house is about 50 meters and uh, the width is more than 25 meters. And uh, this, uh, I was involved in uh, the analysis and design of uh, this post tangent uh, slab, uh, which was uh, part of the floor, uh, of the, of, sorry, of the roof of uh, this house. You can see now the uh, tendons uh, designed. Uh, uh, in the slab and uh, uh, we can also see a uh, final uh, structure which was cast. Um, uh, it is uh, quite a long span with the cantilever of uh, more than 4.5 uh, meters and especially because of this cantilever we needed to use the tree stressing in this uh, family house. I will start uh, my live presentation in RFM. Uh, we will uh, uh, show what is necessary to start uh, pre-stressing analysis uh, in RFM. So first of all, you have to uh, define load case uh, uh, type pre-stressing and some load combinations and also result beams and ribs and slabs. Uh, I will switch into RFM and uh, we see that if I go to load cases, uh, then uh, uh, I defined pre-stressing load case here to which we store all the, uh, not only equivalent loads, but also the results uh, uh, of caused by the tendons caused by the pre-stressing. Another load cases which I did in this example uh, was surveyed uh, snow and uh, the roof in pre-stressed concrete. You should uh, realize that uh, your uh, unit weight of concrete should be a little bit higher than 25 kilonewtons per cubic meter. Uh, either you really calculate it based on the amount of reinforcement or uh, you simply use uh, 25.5 or, or up to 26. So that's what I adapted to. Uh, then we can uh, see the combinations. And I defined um, several combinations. Uh, we can, of course, uh, define more of them. Um, to have the analysis uh, more powerful, but this is a uh, necessary um, amount which, which I did. Uh, all types uh, 
ULS and SLS characteristic frequent and uh, quasi permanent are used for the design and you can see that first uh, set of uh, combinations is uh, contain only solvate and tristressing. That's because we want to analyze uh, the moment when the structure is pre-stressed before any other load is applied. Then I have uh, a different set of combinations with solvate, pre-stressing, snow load and the roof. Uh, so that was it and um, last which I want to show is this model. Uh, you can see that uh, we have, uh, I have defined uh, uh, some uh, result beams and um, the result beam if I select one, is uh, the member, which is, I would say, dummy member or fictive member, defined uh, in the slab. Uh, if I open um, this uh, dialog, um, we can define uh, the, the area from which uh, RFM integrates uh, internal forces from the slab into this, I would say, fictive beam. Uh, so you define uh, the depth of the cross section plus minus and also the width. Uh, you can also define different cross section for the analysis and the design. As you can see here, we have uh, uh, these um, uh, result beams uh, here uh, of the width of uh, half meter and here we have one meter. That's because the cantilever here is much uh, longer and that's why we needed more uh, tendons. If I switch into a uh, wireframe model, you can see this, uh, uh, this uh, green uh, lines, which are the tendons, and you can also see that uh, the tendons are here uh, distributed uh, per, per half meter, and here uh, the distance of the tendons is higher. Uh, last uh, uh, one uh, which I want to uh, show is uh, is this beam and slab system. You can see here that I have a, a, a rip which is uh, linked to uh, the slab and the RFM can uh, integrate internal forces from defined width of the slab together with uh, the rip and uh, we can get the T-section which uh, I will show uh, T-section which then is used in uh, the analysis and in the design. Sorry. Uh, so next what I want to show is uh, the tendon, RF tendon and uh, the functionality of R and tendon, like tendon geometry, pre-stressing losses, and effects of pre-stressing. Uh, the, the, all the data from the model is uh, uh, uploaded to the external module, and uh, we will see uh, the uh, we will see this uh, shortly. After this RF tendon, I will show uh, RF tendon design, and we have also the possibility to uh, use all other functionality of R and tendon uh, of, of RFM, like the nonlinear analysis of the slabs and so on. We have it uh, already here. So this uh, external module starts with uh, the uh, screen, in which you can see uh, schematically how we apply uh, load cases uh, in uh, individual construction stages. So first construction stage is the cell weight. You might have remembered that it was LC1 and LC2 and also the pre-stressing. And then at uh, uh, 120 days we apply the uh, additional dead load uh, like the uh, uh, weight of the floor. And in the definition here uh, you can, of course, add any combination 
which contains those two load cases plus possibly some uh, live loads. Uh, the other combinations uh, are uh, the combinations six, five, six, seven, eight, which contained also the dead load caused uh, by the roof. Then we can define the design members, and uh, I already defined the member. I can show this 3D uh, view, and you can see that uh, I defined uh, this. Uh, beam and slab system with uh, no slab uh, above the supports and with uh, effective slab width um, uh, at mid span. We can also go to any other result beam, for example, this one, uh, which uh, we have uh, uh, defined in uh, uh, RFM. You can pick up the, the members. You can see, for example, this rib uh, is uh, composed of uh, many members. So if you edit, and you can select the members uh, from RFM. In case that uh, you have um, a curved beam, uh, then we can uncoil it so that you can comfortably work in a 2D environment and to analyze 3D uh, tendon. In case of pre-tangent uh, beams, you define in here in this uh, dialog uh, uh, the parameters of uh, stressing bed. Then we go to tendon layout, and um, we can see now x, y, um, and x, z. Sorry, x, y, and x, z uh, uh, projections. If I want to make uh, the uh, beam in the real scale, then uh, it looks like this. This is the plan, and this is uh, the longitudinal uh, section. If I switch off uh, the plan, because uh, I am not interested in that, uh, that would be the straight tendon, then I can uh, scale it in uh, in a, a vertical direction so that uh, I can work with uh, the geometry of the tendon comfortably and with no problem. Uh, at the beginning, uh, I define the material, number of strands, and also other uh, properties like uh, from which side we stress the tendon, material of the duct, and other things. But I can also, if I switch off this, maybe I, I do not switch off it, I go this one, I select uh, one, one point of the tendon, uh, then uh, I can switch into geometry X, X, Z, and uh, if I really switch uh, the drawing here, then I can get a nice uh, uh, explanation of uh, the parameters, how this point of the tendon is defined. The distance is 43 millimeters based on the uh, concrete cover uh, from the formwork. Uh, you can uh, use um, the tendons or, or this, this type of tendon which I use, this type of geometry, is uh, composed of two segments. One is, uh, uh, both are closing segments because there are only two. And first is parabolic um, and straight with uh, the on the left hand side, and uh, the last one is uh, this one uh, straight on the right hand side. Except of uh, these types, you can also you see that we have um, either segments, uh, segmental tendons, or we can also define polygonal tendons. Sometimes, especially abroad in English speaking countries, they use for slabs. Uh, only simplified geometry, uh, or we can import the tendons from text, text file, from table, or from template. If you make it once, then you can use it again, or from, from the Excel file. Uh, there are also some possibilities of export. Um, last thing which I wanted to show uh, here is this um, 
uh, drawing of uh, the tendon along the length. Uh, maybe I can switch on the labels and then uh, you can see that uh, I uh, can produce by defining these levels um, from the bottom of uh, the beam, especially I would say from uh, the form work, I can define the, the distance um, of uh, the spacer which should be uh, placed or to which uh, the spacer should be placed uh, uh, with specific uh, depth. For example, the spacer which is 300 millimeters will be spaced here at 9.18 meters. So the program calculates it for you. Uh, that's uh, it. Uh, by composing uh, 2D and 3D uh, geometry uh, together, we can get uh, this 3D geometry and what more, after we uh, coil the beam in case that it is, um, it is uh, curved, after we coil it back then we add also this uh, coding to the 3D geometry and uh, uh, you can have such tendon. So you work in 2D environment and you have 3D tendon. And then we calculate uh, the equivalent the equivalent load and um, uh, we can display the load. Also if I select uh, the other uh, rib, for example this one, and then uh, you can see that it is a little bit more complicated. You can play with it with the load weight. Uh, this is not a real scale. Uh, this is a real scale uh, because above the support we have very small diameter. So you see that uh, uh, intensive load above, uh, above the support in this uh, small parabola. Uh, but if we w want to see the, uh, um, the this um, equivalent load better, then you use this load weight. Uh, all these um, settings or, or possibilities on the ribbon are uh, shown in the graphical tooltips. If I switch back, uh, you have it uh, a little bit uh, simpler uh, to this uh, to this. Um, beam and I can show uh, that uh, you can this, see not only distributed loads but also point loads and this is um, calculated from the deviations of uh, the tendon along the length of uh, the tendon. Um, but um, then after we calculate this we distribute it into, into uh, distributed loads. You can also uh, influence the precision uh, by setting, for example, one uh, degree here and you can get more of the forces. Uh, actually, uh, the um, smaller the angle is, uh, the more precise um, equivalent load you calculate. But on the other hand, if it's uh, too small, then uh, it um, makes the calculation longer, of course. I can keep one uh, degree and uh, we can get a uh, nice, uh, quite nice equivalent load. In some cases, in, for example in uh, 1D elements, uh, you can also use uh, the uh, functionality of load balancing um, for, uh, for the design of uh, tendon force. Uh, as uh, we have now uh, the slab, then there is no direct uh, uh, load, um, I mean um, uh, load per meter, uh, we have load per meter square only, so the functionality cannot be shown in here, but the principle is that you balance uh, the external load, selected external load, for example cell weight or you can make also the combination of cell weight and additional dead load and you balance it by uh, the equivalent load caused by the pre-stressing. And uh, the authors like T.Y. Lin or um, some professors, in, uh, Swiss, Swiss professors um, uh, advise that you should balance 
approximately 100%. And if you design the Euro code, then probably um, a little bit more um, percentage of these dead loads. After we have uh, this defined, we can go to uh, short-term losses. You can uh, see uh, these uh, um, losses, uh, also uh, the checks uh, of the tendon according to Eurocode and German Annex. Um, you can also have the summary of uh, uh, these tendon in which you can uh, read and display all the necessary information like uh, minimum radius, um, the area of tendon, uh, sum of lengths of straight and curved parts, uh, cumulative angular ang angle along the length, and all these uh, useful uh, parameters. Uh, design a member results can be shown if we calculate RFM, but before I do it, I want to explain. This is again the um, picture of uh, construction stages. Uh, which um, actually can be used if you have uh, a different um, a different uh, uh, age of uh, the beam in your complex 3D structure. And uh, here we have uh, the reinforcement zones. I have it, I have defined the reinforcement. Of course, you can see the tendon here. Maybe I didn't uh, uh, show. Um, here in tendon geometry, sorry about that, in tendon geometry I probably uh, should show this cross section. You can see uh, how the, the tendon goes in uh, by selecting the position of the tendon. Also if I select uh, the first uh, uh, rip and slap and I go like this, you can see the change of the cross section above the support. So we can check it, you can um, uh, check it also in a, a 3D. There are more possibilities which I'm not able to show you here and possibly we will have more time during our um, seminars um, in Munich and Vienna. Now I go back to the reinforcement. Uh, uh, I switch into more simple uh, result beam. And uh, we uh, define, of course, we can add uh, any, mm, any number of zones. I believe that uh, this uh, can be sufficient for this case. And uh, we can define the check positions. And uh, in these positions, we uh, then check uh, the uh, cross sections. So I selected the positions above the supports and at its span. Now I press the button uh, calculate uh, FEM. In fact, um, the external module uses um, RFM uh, finite element engine and we will get uh, the results uh, of all the load cases as combinations soon. It's not a small structure but it takes a um, reasonable time so we will see it uh, in a minute and in the meantime I will see if I forgot something. So we went through uh, the segments of tendon geometry, we explained all the possibilities of uh, polygonal and now it is uh, finished, I could hear it uh, but I finished this one. Uh, export and import uh, pre-stressing losses, effect of pre-stressing and all of these. Now we go to tendon design. We design the cross sections. Uh, so, uh, in these selected, pre selected um, uh, sections, we can go to RF tendon design, and all the uh, data is prepared from the construction stages, from, um, from pre stressing, and uh, uh, we find the cross section in uh, selected sections, and then uh, the data is generated. Now we have uh, four sections. This is above the support. This is at mid span. Again, above the support, you can see it in in um, uh, info window. And this is uh, uh, 
I think it was at the end of, uh, of uh, uh, Parabola. I can uh, calculate all these um, sections and as I already designed it, you see that it is satisfactory 99% uh, above the support. Um, let's see some results. Here we have um, uh, individual construction stages, stage at uh, the pre-stressing, then when uh, additional dead load is applied and uh, at 100 years. Um, I will skip um, this um, data which uh, in fact were filled in. You see for example, let's say these construction stages were uploaded from the, the module. Uh, you can see uh, how it changes, but uh, we cannot change it as it was imported from RF Tendon. But it is uh, for your information. Also action stages, um, internal forces, um, there are the all the losses and forces uh, shown. And here you would define the reinforcement. There are quite uh, nice possibilities of the definition of the reinforcement and uh, and uh, you can you can see um, the reinforcement uh, how it goes. Uh, but let me to explain uh, these um, checks, concrete uh, checks. And we have uh, first uh, we have capacity uh, in which we uh, show uh, the um, capacity against the flexure and normal force in interaction diagram. Of course, you can see many possibilities uh, on the ribbon. Uh, shear analysis. Here it is uh, interesting and uh, I wanted to show you that if we are at mid-span, then the longitudinal shear is uh, even bigger than a vertical one. You can see the direction of the shear force and uh, also uh, the um, effective width of the slab. So the, we need both stirrups in both uh, uh, directions. If we select the uh, section above the support, then you see that uh, the, um, this um, direction of the shear force is um, uh, vertical. And uh, this one, uh, at the end, it's even uh, bigger. This is completely almost completely horizontal because of the shear lag. If we apply a high normal force of pre-stressing, then of course uh, just behind the, uh, the anchor uh, we should not um, use um, the sectional analysis. It is anchorage zone, but I don't think I made it uh, immediately after the anchor and uh, still um, RFM integrates quite uh, significant forces, but we can design them. Uh, no, is no problem. So let's go back to uh, the mid span. Uh, oh, maybe I should have uh, shown distortion above the support, but doesn't matter. We have also the possibility uh, to analyze the interaction of all internal forces, which I will I will explain later, um, especially during the webinar. Stress limitation, uh, both um, concrete. Um, I would say not both, but concrete. Uh, pre-stressing reinforcement and uh, non-pre-stressed reinforcement, crack width, um, then uh, uh, some advanced. We have the possibility to uh, check the detailing, but I, I switched it off here in settings. You can switch it. Oh, this is not switched now, but, uh, but um, sometimes you have to switch it off because you do not uh, provide a real reinforcing cage and the response or stiffnesses a response I can show here and you can um, use this response to show all these uh, stages. So that was at 28 days. You can see that there is quite significant uh, uh, pre-stressing at bottom fibers. Then uh, at uh, 120 days we have some losses already and also higher load. So this is smaller and at 100 years it is even a uh, bigger difference. Uh, when we uh, are happy with the design, then we can go back to RF, um, RF tendon and uh, we can switch into, for example, this uh, rip which was more complicated with um, 
complicated section and again you define the sections which you really want to uh, be analyzed and to be checked according to uh, code and uh, the, the program again generates uh, the data. In this case um, I found a, a small problem with uh, uh, the uh, I can calculate all with the stress limitation uh, you will see in a second. So now we have here progress bar and it shows you it's already done uh, what is uh, being uh, uh, what calculation is being performed and here we have 102 102 so how to check it this is a section at 15 meters uh, you see it uh, selected here and uh, the check which is not satisfactory only by 2 percent 2.6 is stress limitation then we go to checks and you select uh, stress limitation and uh, we see this is fiber in which the ratio of stress and, st uh, and um, uh, stress limit is uh, critical, so it's extreme. We can also make this bigger. There is uh, 13.9 megapascals and it should be 13.5. So the program tells you uh, exactly what is happening in the cross section and uh, then you can sometimes if um, it's straightforward. It gives you some nonconformity. Um, for example, a check of cross section is not satisfactory. Calculated compressive strength under quasi permanent combination is higher than stress limit, and so on, so on. You can either <laughs> increase the this uh, K2 factor uh, in case, for example, that it is um, it is uh, during uh, it happens during the pre-stressing. Um, in the fibers where you have the pre-stress tendons, then due to the fact that you measure all the forces in the tendon, you can uh, afford uh, to decrease uh, our sub, our sup and our inf uh, factors. But in this case, it is at the end. Uh, you can see that it is phased at 100 years, and in this case, either we say okay, two percent is uh, not uh, that uh, big problem, or we would have to increase. Uh, the depth of the cross section, or we can also uh, increase the concrete grade. The other possibility would be if you, we go to uh, reinforced cross, sorry, to design uh, and reinforcement, uh, then uh, I can select the uh, this. Um, uh, I can select. Uh, sorry, zoom all. I can select this layer. And instead of uh, diameter 12, I can try to use diameter 14. And I calculate current extreme. And I see that it is only 0.9%. So we can play with it. Maybe 16, diameter 16 would be OK. And it seems uh, it would. So if we go back to sections and we calculate all, because uh, all the data of um, of that uh, reinforced cross section was deleted, and we see that the, the rip in this case is uh, satisfactory. Maybe we can uh, go through uh, this uh, all these um, navigator items, uh, but uh, I would prefer uh, to finish uh, the example, and we can concentrate on that in some other. Uh, webinar or uh, or uh, seminars. Of course, we can generate reports uh, both in RF tendon design and RF tendon. Uh, but I think as the example it was uh, enough, and we can uh, go further. Uh, so I explained um, the design uh, of, or, or I would say, sectional assessment or sectional check in result beams and uh, ribs, but you might uh, object that this is a 2D member, this is uh, a slab. Um, then, uh, of course, once you have uh, designed this 1D fictive members, then you get some non pre stressed reinforcement. As an additional reinforcement, which has to be um, put into the slab. And you can also 
use the functionality of this external module which uh, puts the results or I would say the, the equivalent loads back into RFM as an upward loads. And now you have a one load case like for example uh, self weight which, which uh, uh, acts downwards and of course pre-stressing acts upwards and you can calculate uh, you can perform the analysis of 2D uh, members, I mean uh, 3D structure with the slabs and you can also perform 2D design directly in RFM and uh, after you uh, have uh, this potential additional reinforcement additional to the one which we found in um, result beams uh, then you can also perform uh, this um, non-linear analysis of 2D structures, to 2D, 2D slabs. Uh, we definitely will show it during the seminars. Uh, now, as I would say a teaser a, a little bit, I would show other examples of pre-stressed uh, concrete which we uh, input in RFM and which we analyzed in RFM. This is a post-tangent uh, slab bridge, which we took from Prague University, Czech Technical University. Uh, it was published uh, by one professor as an example uh, of the calculation, but we, we used different model. You see here this um, uh, exact shape of uh, the uh, cross-section, and if we simplify it, then we define this result beam, each result beam would contain one tendon and then we can use RFM to calculate really 3D distribution of stresses caused by the moving loads and then via these uh, result beams we can design each I would say strip of the slab separately. So of course in each of these result beams, we defined such uh, uh, tendons uh, when, uh, yeah, I, I, I defined it exactly according to uh, that textbook and then we can get um, the results uh, in our fan like this is the effect of pre-stressing and the defle upward deflection and this view from the bottom of the uh, bridge. Another example which we made, actually Adrian Langhammer input, is a double T post tension bridge. And this was from a German report uh, which I do not remember the name, but uh, Adrian then can um, tell us. Um, this uh, uh, double T post tension bridge was uh, uh, modeled in uh, RFM uh, as two independent beams which were uh, linked together by autotropic slab. The slab uh, had uh, zero stiffness in longitudinal direction because in longitudinal direction we had these beams but it has uh, some stiffness in transverse direction to make sure that uh, those uh, beams share the load um, applied only on one of them. So that was uh, the model. Uh, of course, we uh, designed, uh, you might have seen in the previous picture, the, the tendons. We designed the tendons and uh, calculated losses and all other um, checks. You can see um, the checks uh, in uh, RF tendon design. Uh, first was um, a flexure check and then a shear and also uh, here the torsion check. Uh, I, I haven't mentioned uh, that uh, this uh, equivalent thin wall section is uh, calculated automatically. Um, last example which I would uh, like to show is uh, the pretensioned tapered beam. Mm, you can see uh, the longitudinal um, this longitudinal view and also in RF tendon design the reinforced cross section above the support and generated reinforced cross section at 
the position at which we wanted to make uh, the design. So, in fact, if you use the templates of the reinforcement, then the reinforcement is adapted um, automatically along the land based on the depth of uh, calculated depth of the cross section. Um, after we um, showed uh, all these examples, I would like again to indicate some topics which I would like to address during the seminars. Uh, so, it is a kind of theoretical background. Definitely, we will be speaking about the losses. This is a picture of uh, uh, longitudinal profile of the tendon and uh, uh, frictional and uh, um, anchorage set losses. We will uh, also discuss um, how um, the effects of pre-stressing uh, are applied to the structure, that uh, it comes from uh, the deviation of the tendon and this deviation is a source of radial forces and then we can get this resultant force and the resultant force is then applied in the form of uh, equivalent load. You can see the picture of all loads, Fx, S, Fy, all the moments applied in a, a 3D structure uh, with, uh, it was curved structure, of course it is uncoiled here, so you can see complete set of uh, loads. Then we should be talking about uh, the, the background of uh, sectional design. We see ultimate limit states and serviceability limit states, all the list of the checks. Uh, anyway, you uh, saw uh, the possibilities um, in um, in um, uh, RF tendon design, and here you can see also uh, German and Austrian uh, flag. So we have uh, uh, national annexes uh, of uh, DIN code and ÖNORM. Uh, for the analysis of uh, the sections uh, loaded by uh, bending moments and normal forces. Uh, we will discuss uh, the methods, um, first the uh, decompression state method, but also initial state method which we introduced in RF uh, tendon design. We will touch also the shear analysis, um, the equilibrium conditions and how uh, from these equilibrium conditions uh, the Eurocode formulas uh, are, are derived. And what uh, more, uh, what is the role of uh, lever arm, lever arm uh, caused by the flexure in the shear analysis? That uh, will be also a topic. And last but not least, we have a nice uh, feature of uh, interaction of all internal forces. You can see all internal forces here. And this is just the explanatory picture how you can do it uh, to combine shear force and uh, bending moment. So that was uh, all from my side and uh, I would like to uh, pass the presenter to Gerlin. Thank you for your attention. I'm very happy to have you with us. Many thanks, Yada, for the very interesting and informative presentation. So I myself found it very interesting. I hope you all enjoyed the webinar. Now we still have time for, ah, sorry, I've, I've just noticed that Yada mentioned the seminars. So the seminars will be held in January in Munich and Vienna, and you will be informed about this by the global newsletters, and you can also register online. Um, as you see here on the slide, that's our global website. You can always register online and if, you, if there are any questions, you can give us a call, write an email, so the usual, the usual ways to contact us. So there might be still a bit time left for some questions. We looked through the questions that came in and I would like to highlight two of them. 
and that might be of general interest for all of you. So there's one question. Could Yada, could you please summarize the new features of the new RF tendon and RF tendon design modules compared to the old versions? So just a very brief summary. Okay, I can I can do it. Um, in fact, we advanced uh, a lot. Uh, that was uh, quite a nice development. Uh, possibly the biggest uh, contribution from our side uh, were the national annexes of uh, Austria and Germany. So we have it, uh, and we have, we have it done properly. I would <laughs> I was sorry for saying so. I would say in German way. So uh, hopefully you will like it. Uh, we also uh, improved uh, our reinforcement uh, editor. Um, inside of the editor, you can use uh, undo and redo function. Uh, we, you can define the zones. You, you, you saw part of uh, uh, the uh, features uh, before, so reinforcement zones. Of course, uh, on the RFM side, we improved it significantly um, due to these result beams and uh, the system rip and slap because this is something which uh, was not there before and it is very uh, useful for uh, the analysis um, of um, 2D uh, structures. Uh, I would say you can use it also, I, I did mention that you can use it also for more complicated uh, examples if your tendon is curved in plan then uh, our result beam does not need to be straight and uh, we can uh, analyze uh, quite complicated uh, shapes. Uh, as concerning the tendons, we introduce multi-editing of uh, tendon properties, which I haven't shown, but, uh, but uh, we can show it uh, during the seminars. Uh, we have also, I think I did mention ten tendon templates. I didn't show it, but uh, once you uh, use uh, uh, specific type of tendon and you want to have it saved and you save it and you for, for your next structures you can use it. As concerning, uh, if I remember, um, the, the design of the sections, uh, then we edit uh, also fatigue checks. So I think, think that that's it. Uh, maybe I forgot something, but um, Anyway, you will see when you test it. That's great. This was a nice summary. Thank you very much. And I found another interesting question. Um, is it possible to export and import the geometry of the tendons to or from a DXF file? I can show. OK, uh, great. I, I, I will select this one. This is a little bit uh, simpler. And I go to tendon tendon layout, and you see you can you can draw current tendon for example. Um, you can set the labels, which uh, you will see that there are uh, radius, uh, length of the parabola or part of the tendon, and cumulative angle. And I will switch this to here. So now you can prepare it. You can also change the grid. Uh, it is here. You can define either equidistant or non-equidistant levels. I do not want to go further. Uh, but after you are happy with uh, the picture which you produced, then by pressing the right mouse button, sorry, <laughs> my mouse is, uh, you can go to the Excel file. Okay, you export it as the XF file. Uh, so it is possible and you have a nice uh, draft drawing uh, already. Um, okay, you can also sounds... draw all tendons. If you have more tendons in this, um, uh, you can draw one tendon after the other. But in this result beam, we have only one tendon. So, so we cannot uh, show it. OK? Oh, OK, great. This seems to be quite easy. Thank you very much. I think these were the most important questions and now it's already an hour gone. So Yada, could you please um, change back to the yeah, to the next slide? So I just want to finish up the webinar. I want to thank you all for your attention 
And um, just to emphasize, you might know all about this. So there are more webinars upcoming next year. Next year, there are the seminars that we mentioned in January. You can usually watch our previous webinars. They are recorded, and you can just have a look to our website in the section webinars, and you can download the recorded videos or just watch them directly. And as you know from this webinar, you register online at www.global.com. And now I just thank you for your attention. And it was nice to have you here. Many thanks. Thank you very much. Bye bye. I hope bye. I see you in Munich or in Vienna. <laughs> That's great. Thank you. Bye. bye.